so uh, welcome to my talk, Gradual Typing is the Best. This is where I was going to call out everyone who thought this wasn't going to work, but it kind of isn't working, so <laughs> we're going to skip that part of my talk. Uh, my name's Cameron Matheson. I'm a software engineer at Instructure, and uh, you probably shouldn't listen to me because I'm talking about gradually typed languages, but I spend all my time writing uh, dynamically typed, thank you, dynamically typed code in Ruby and JavaScript. Uh, I did do half a Haskell MOOC once, though, so I like to pretend I'm an expert. Um, so I wanted to start by, uh, I listen to a lot of podcasts, and I heard one recently about this family that was way into like the Christmas spirit. Uh, specifically, they really were into Santa Claus, and they would uh, stage these like elaborate real life encounters with Santa, like their kids would stumble upon Santa in the forest, and they would have to help him out somehow, like give his reindeer some carrots or something. And uh, this worked out great for most of their kids, but one of their sons like really took the Santa Claus thing to heart. And um, so much so that in high school, he was getting in like fist fights with other kids to defend the reality of Santa Claus. By the way, I hope I'm not spoiling anything for anyone. Uh, but uh, you know, the school administration had to call his parents in to uh, try to you know, have the Santa talk with this, this high schooler. And they weren't willing to do that. In fact, even on the radio, the dad was unwilling to refute the existence of Santa Claus. So unfortunately, uh, a careless relative once let slip that he was the Santa in one of these encounters. And this kid's life was ruined immediately. Like, his world fell apart. 15 years later, he still can't have relationships with people or trust anyone. Um, and the reason I'm telling you this story is because like, I had this exact same experience. Um, except it wasn't with Santa Claus. Uh, it, was, it was several years ago. I was a student, and I was super happy. You know, I was, I was writing a lot of Ruby, which I loved. I was doing some scheme at school, which I really liked. Uh, I was doing a little bit of JavaScript, although back then I think it was called jQuery. Um, <laughs> and so, you know, it looked like dynamic. I, I, I started programming with C++, and, you know, it, it was hard back then. It was the dial-up days, so it didn't have Stack Overflow or anything. And, Things were confusing. Java was verbose. It looked to me like the industry was moving towards dynamic languages. You know, um, Facebook was on PHP. A bunch of the startups were doing Rails. Uh, life was good. And then I took a uh, course at school. Uh, I, I was way into compilers and programming languages at the time. So I took this class called Programming Languages and Semantics. And in that class, we just did. Um, by hand interpretation of lambda calculus programs, basically, uh, using different like uh, machine types. And, and a huge portion of the class was actually dedicated to uh, static type systems, which surprised me, because I thought they were going away. Um, but it turns out that you know, the past couple decades, programming language researchers had been developing like more and more sophisticated type systems. The industry was totally ignoring, you know? You were getting stuff like Miranda and Haskell and dependent types, all this really cool stuff that could uh, verify correctness of a lot of properties of your program before it runs. And so uh, static typing was uh, causing some like problems in my brain and my heart because there were a lot of benefits to it, you know? It uh, could catch errors early. I hate writing unit tests. Um, and I think like a lot of the unit tests I write are bullcrap that could be caught by a static type checker. So that was appealing. Um, tooling is better with statically typed languages. You can pry Vim for my cold dead hands, you know, but there are like quiet moments of introspection where I am secretly jealous of like Java IDEs. You know, they do like uh, this uh, sophisticated refactoring and um, uh, accurate, autocomplete, stuff like that is, uh, is cool. Um, and documentation, you know, for my, for my half a Haskell MOOC, I did learn that given a method name and a type signature, you basically know what stuff does. And uh, how many times are you on like NPM and you pull down some undocumented modules, so you gotta dig into the source, and some function you wanna call takes like an O, and you're like, what the crap is that? Um, so static typing is great. Uh, 
And so this is where, like, I was in crisis mode. You know, I had been so happy. And now, like, I hated programming uh, because, you, you know, dynamic languages were clearly inferior. Um, so that's when my Haskell experimentation began. And uh, quickly, I discovered that that was a failed experiment. Um, Haskell has these, like, it has a really sophisticated type system, and it's lazy, and those two things combine into these horrible type errors. Uh, in fact, like, when, when I would learn about type systems at school, uh, you would, the, the things professors or other people on the internet often like to say, you know, is like, once your program type checks, it's going to run correctly. And I thought that was a selling point, but it really just means your program never runs. Uh, <laughs> so the Haskell people figured this out. I think you can defer type errors to runtime now, but it was awful. Um, also, you know, the writing was on the wall. JavaScript was going to be more and more important for us web people, you know. And so I knew that I was going to have to be in JavaScript anyway. Um, additionally, static typing has... You know, like the way static, there's trade offs, right? Like, assuming this room is the uh, universe of valid programs, static types would be like one column of chairs, or type checkable programs, right? So, uh, a lot of, it rules out a lot of valid programs. Uh, and a real life example of that would be like, uh, recently there was closure transducers or transducers, transducers JS. Those don't have like a real type signature. Um, so, you're, you're limiting yourself in some ways. Um, so then, programming language researchers, researcher, uh, they, they save the day. And this is where I have to do a disclaimer because uh, I don't actually, you know, I don't have a PhD. Uh, I'm going to mispronounce a bunch of names, leaving probably some important stuff out, and um, others, you know, take this with a grain of salt. <laughs> but I read a bunch of papers. Uh, in the mid-2000s, uh, Gilead Braca, I said I was going to mispronounce these things. Uh, this is the guy behind Dart. He came out with a paper called Pluggable Type Systems. And in this paper, he was arguing that uh, uh, static type systems shouldn't be a language feature, right? You, languages should take type systems as plugins, so you could have one or many type systems. And he explored this in a programming language, I think, called Newspeak. Um, so maybe you would have your static type system type language and also you know, various linter type languages. And um, so, so that was cool. You know, it kind of like was not orthodox at the time. Uh, in 2006, Eric Meyer and Peter Drayton came out with a paper called Static Typing Where Possible, Dynamic Typing When Needed the end of the Cold War between programming languages. Eric Meyer is an old Haskell guy who went on to work on a lot of cool stuff in C-sharp, like Link and the async await stuff we heard about earlier this morning. Um, so basically, their paper was arguing that um, developing new stuff in statically typed languages is restrictive and annoying. But as your program matures and as you add more people to your team, you know, you don't want, like, your dumb coworker ruining things. So types uh, protect you from this. Um, so, so he didn't put forth a solution. You know, they were just putting this out there. You know, like static and dynamic is, uh, it's not a good argument to make. Um, now in 2006, this is a big one. Jeremy Seek and Walid Taha come out with the paper Gradual Typing for Functional Languages. This is where the term gradual typing is invented. And so, in this paper, they uh, take this strictly typed, simply typed lambda calculus and regular lambda calculus, and they develop a way that the two can interoperate, and, and they come up with a soundness theorem, which uh, the soundness for this kind of thing means that if there was going to be a type error in one of these hybrid programs that are typed and untyped, the error is guaranteed to come from the dynamic code. And so that's important because that means as you start annotating your program with types, uh, those portions are now safe. Um, and this is done with just annotations and also inserting uh, runtime checks. Uh, that same year, uh, independently SAMPTH, 
from Twitter. I don't know how to say his real name, so I'm not going to try. Um, Felicen uh, come out with a paper called Interlanguage Migration from Scripts to Programs. This is the birth of TypeTracket, which is the first uh, concrete gradually typed language. And it's also still the best gradually typed language. It's um, the only one that can use the type system to inform the VM how to uh, use types to increase performance. Good heavens. OK. And um, so uh, if you're interested in gradual typing, I recommend checking out TypeTracket. It's really cool. Um, now fast forward six years, Microsoft gives us TypeScript, which is a type superset of JavaScript. And so we're going to take a look at, oh, it's not sound. It doesn't meet all the criteria that um, uh, Jeremy Seek put out in his paper. But it's close enough. And if you're interested in where the soundness breaks down, they have a page on their website that explains it really. It's reasonable trade-offs. Um, so we're going to do some live coding. And oh my gosh, I was supposed to say cross your fingers. But I've got some terminal plug-in. <laughs> OK. So this is a uh, TypeScript program, also a JavaScript program. And uh, you know we're going to have an add one function that adds one to a number. And are we, are we cut off? Oh, let's just do this. OK. Can we see? Is this good? Um, so if I run this, you know, oh, oh, first let's type check. I've got this Vim plugin that lets me type make. And nothing comes back. So we type check, uh, which we would expect because we have no type annotations. And so if we run the JavaScript, 2 and 11. So that's clearly not what I meant, right? JavaScript takes uh, strings or numbers with additions. So we'll just say we want a number. Um, and now we get this sweet. Our uh, error argument of type string is not assignable to parameter of type number. It gives me a line and a column. And it, Vim even jumps me right there. Is this OK? Um, so, so this is great. It found a type error for us. I actually do run into this number and string stuff in real life, so I think that's pretty cool. Um, but let's look at a harder one. Um, in structure, I work on a lot of assignment and homework submission type stuff. So. Um, here we're going to define an interface called submission. And this, this is just saying that uh, for an object to satisfy this interface, it's got to have a number score and a string property called type. And then we're also going to make an assignment called class. It'll have points possible, a list of submissions. Uh, it's got this constructor and an average score method. So this just computes an average. You know, it's pretty basic stuff. Uh, so let's make a new assignment. We're not passing in any submissions, and we'll run average score. So first we compile. Type check, so it should be correct. Uh, ah, not a number. OK, so we have a divide by 0. Uh, the type system can't catch this kind of errors. So let's, uh, let's give it a submission, though. Oh. Let's see, we need a score and a type. Is that what I said? Type. OK, we'll run it again. Oh, comma expected. Thanks. Thanks, guys. This is what I have you here for. Oh, no. <laughs> Thank you. I knew this was a mistake. OK. Um, OK, so it works. Uh, so let's add another one. Let's, let's have two assignments. You know, that way, the average is actually meaningful. Uh, score five, type. I know, guys, I'm doing that on purpose this time. Shoot. <laughs> OK, so uh, unlike JavaScript, TypeScript enforces that you um, provide the parameters you expect. Uh, if you want optional parameters, you can. But by default, you know, you need to do the right thing. So we'll put this in the array and run again. Great. And just to demonstrate one other thing, 
Um, we could add another one. This time we'll forget our type type or our type thing, and it, it gives us a nice error again. Property type is missing. Um, so if we wanted to not require that one, we actually can make them optional with a question mark. And then we type check. So anyway, I think this is pretty cool. Um, my biggest complaint with TypeScript is just that it doesn't have anything to protect us from nulls um, or like empty lists, you know. But uh, overall, it can catch a lot of errors and it's great. Now, last year, Facebook released Flow, which is another JS type checker. It's made for huge code bases, so it's, it's really fast. It has a daemon that runs in the background and um, just updates the things that actually changed. So that's cool. The really aud audacious part, though, is they added type inference, which, I, as far as I know, has never been tried in a gradual language. And I don't think it's possible to do it like completely correctly, but we'll see that it does pretty awesome. So here we have a flow program. Um, there's the square function, x times x. And we're going to square 2. So we'll flow check it. That works. Now we'll try to square the string to. Now in TypeScript, this would type check because we haven't annotated square, right? But in flow, oh, we get the sweet error string. This type is incompatible. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, now add one. This is our example from earlier, right? And here we're going to add one to one and add one to a string. It can't catch the error here because that's actually a valid operation. So we would still annotate with flow. And it, it, I don't know if I mentioned this, it keeps TypeScript syntax, which is very handy. Um, OK, so there we go. Uh, now, this is, this is where it addresses my big complaint with TypeScript, which is um, Null protection, but we'll 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 go through the example first. So foo takes an x, which logs the property bar, um, and then we have three things here. We've got a, which has a bar, b is undefined, c we mistype bar into baz. So let's um, flow check. Okay, that works, and we can run it. Although I don't know that that's very interesting. Okay, great. Um, now we have foo b. So TypeScript, again, would have no problems here. OK, this is kind of amazing to me. Property bar cannot be accessed on possibly undefined value. So when we ran foo before, there were no issues. But now that there's a potential of running foo with an undefined x, it makes us actually check that x exists. Uh, and now we should type check. Great. And let's try C also. So this one has the typo, right? OK, zero errors. This is too bad. Um, it doesn't notice. I mean, flow, this is a trade off they've made, right? They don't want to make you protect against every property access ever. So it won't catch like typos on your property names. If you wanted protection here, you would just make an interface like we made earlier. Um, so that's very cool. Now recently, in the past couple weeks, Google went to the ES ECMAScript dudes and proposed SoundScript. Um, SoundScript, oh no. <sighs> OK, Sounds, so this is a shell script, guys. Uh, SoundScript is uh, a sound, like it's actually sound. Unlike TypeScript and Flow, it is a sound, gradually typed system for JavaScript that they want to be part of the next revision of JavaScript. Uh, and I think like it's been met with like a whole lot of skepticism, basically, although Jafar would know better. But I did pull up the ES6 meeting notes, and um, Sam said, unsound type systems are not usable for performance. If we want types to help the VM, it is not going to happen as an evolutionary type system on top of TypeScript or Flow. And then ARB, who I think is one of the Google guys, but I don't really know, um, he points out that, yeah, to get predictable performance, we need types. 
and uh, particularly sound types. So, so you know, that's, that's something being tossed around. Um, in conclusion, you know, I used to, uh, like, uh, like, I would actually lose sleep at night thinking about the static and dynamic thing. But it turns out it's not the way to think about things. We've got gradual typing now. It's better than both. It's the future. And I think you should try TypeScript or Flow. That's it. <laughs>